like to start with some uh, select board announcements. Um, Claire Pond, as you know, summer's here, so Claire Pond is open. Hours of operation will be seven days a week from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. The last day of the season, uh, please mark your calendars, will be August 25th. The Lakeville Arts Council is pleased to announce that their last outdoor concert will take place on July 23rd. That would be tomorrow evening from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Old Townhouse. And for additional information uh, about the concert, please reach out uh, to www.lakevillearts.council.ma.org. We still have some vacancies on our committees. Um, I know that we did receive a few uh, letters of interest um, over the last week or so. So I'd like to, you know, just to keep inviting people to, um, you know, send your letters in. We have Cable Advisory Committee, Cemetery Commission, Council on Aging, Energy Advisory, Park Commission, and Open Space. A little fun fact for everybody. Uh, did you know that Ted Williams not only owned the Ted Williams camp, but also rented the Fuller House on Highland Road from Lydia Roch in the summer. Lydia's farm became the Ted Williams summer camp for the girls, where the girls would swim, play tennis, and ride horses. And Lydia purchased two horses, Slugger and Home Run, for, the t for Ted himself to ride when he was here in the summer. Kind of a fun fact. Um, I would like, I'm hoping that the uh, select board will entertain me briefly. Um, I was going to bring something up under old business this evening, um, but because we have somebody in our audience um, this evening that uh, kind of brought me to bring it forward a little sooner. So as we know, um, we're faced with um, the tax preliminary tax assessments that have gone out um, and primarily has kind of hit Long Pond um, residents and the town mm -hmm. assessors had held a meeting last week um, and it was at the senior center. It was very well received. Um, there were a lot of residents there. The assessors, um, you know, listened to all the concerns. What I was hoping that this board could do um, is I have some, you know, questions that I have of, you know, that I'd like to ask our, you know, chief assessor and possibly um, the board of assessors about a little bit more about the process and understanding. Um, this has clearly impacted our residents um, tremendously. So I'm looking to see if there would be any interest of the select board um, to have a meeting with the, the, the assessors to have some questions answered. And Can't hurt. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, if we can ask Mr. Nunes, if you wouldn't mind trying to set that up for us. So, um, Mr. Kavicki, would you like to come up and just sure. introduce yourself? Okay. Uh, Robbie Kavicki, 24, for sure. Have a seat. I'll see. Okay. And uh, my taxes have doubled, and I have a, a small little piece of property, okay? And it, they evaluated the land at $1 million, okay? I paid roughly uh, 450 for it a couple years ago. And uh, <clears throat> so now uh, the, uh, they said they'll come back later and uh, evaluate the house and the land again after we uh, do the rebate. Or, whatever you call it, right? Uh, <clears throat> but the funny thing about it is, uh, you know, I'm $1 million, and uh, some people um, uh, estimated that 250 It uh, varies big time, okay? And with a small little house, and it's just, it seemed to be unfair just because we live on Long Pond now. It's a body of water. Now we have a lot of body of waters in town and they're uh, targeted at a lower rate. So I think that we've been treated unfairly and I asked the board to squash this right away, okay, because there's a big mistake. We have, there was supposed to be uh, targeted uh, the Lakeville Pond and unfortunately, I think you were at the meeting and you were at the meeting that there were elderly people that weren't on the pond that were taxed 30 to 40 percent. Okay, so, you know, it, it's uh, 
something's wrong there, big time. So I just asked the board to squash it right away before we have big problems. And uh, it's just, you, know, you talk to the board, they did a great job. They had to be under the um, rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. But there was a mistake. There was a mistake in the computer, I guess, right? And put it that way, okay? Just an honest mistake, not the board's problem, because they said they follow the rules and regulations. We had that, uh, you hired that guy that does the evaluation. Dave, he was super. All kinds of uh, talking and da-da-da. You didn't know what he was talking about, but he did a great job. He did a great job. And uh, <clears throat> so I guess what I'm doing is asking you for help to squash it right away and uh, because it's just out of control, okay, out of control. Imagine my property, $1 million, just the land. And they're telling me that they're going to come back and evaluate it and evaluate the house. So if this keeps on, what's going to happen next year? Are they going to come in and say, okay, it's worth a million and a half? So, you know, I feel for the elderly people that don't even live on the pond or live on the pond for years and years, and now they, they have anxiety. Okay, anxiety. Imagine that. We have to sell our houses and move out of here. We've he heard that for years and years. So now it's time to put a stop to that because we've had it. We've had it. The rules and regulations, they say they can't do anything about it. Okay, I agree. Amen. So let's do something about it, right, and make it easier for them to evaluate our houses in your house. Okay. So, uh, uh, um, so I, what can I say more? No, I'm glad that you had reached out, um, and I know that you had, you know, looked to, um, you know, come in front of the board. And, you know, at our last meeting, there were a lot of residents here that had a lot of, you know, concerns too. And the board assessors meeting hadn't been held at that point. So, as I had indicated at that meeting, um, you know, this board. Um, Solid. <laughs> that's okay. Oh my God. <laughs> Give it to me, I'll shut it off for you. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm not familiar with that, but... Don't sign my contract tonight. <laughs> We're out right of here. Yeah, right. Oh my goodness, oh that my was God. great. Oh. Um, but as I had Sorry. said, that this particular board doesn't, um, you know, have any purview over you know the, the tax assessment process in, in any way however i think that you know this particular board is um you know interested in you know the services that are affecting the residents and if there is some way that this board would be able to you know help influence you know some positive change here um i'm certain i'm sure we could you know follow whatever you know, rules we would need to, to try to do that. So that's why, you know, we're going to work to schedule a meeting with the assessors. And um, I know I certainly, you know, need to be further educated on, you know, some of this too, so. Well, we, I mean, can I speak? Sure. Yeah, uh, you're the lead, you guys are the leaders in, in uh, the town, right? We look up to you, right? Even though we, you don't see us, we support you. And we support the police, the fire department, the schools. When you ask for an override, we're right there for you. We're right 100%. Well, for the police, you you know, we're there. So we're asking you, okay, the board, to do something about this is an emergency, okay? Because, like I said, this is not only taxes, it's creating anxiety in people, okay? Anxiety, okay? We're upset, okay? And uh, I'm more upset because of the, the people that, got taxed that didn't even live on the pond. And as far as I'm concerned, you, you guys, or I'm sorry, I don't mean to use that word, but uh, the board is in power of the chairman. Is that you, do you, I mean, I'm asking, do you hire the chairman? Are you the ones that hire the chairman? The, the chairman of the assessors? Yes. Uh, no, the um, board of assessors, is, they're an elected body. So, um, our town folks, you know, elect the Board of Assessors. Um, the assessors have actually um, hired, a, an, you know, an agency to come in as the principal assessment. And a lot, of, a lot of municipalities actually do that, so. 
so the uh, the board uh, they paid. I thought I thought the uh, the chairman was um, a town employee paid. Not the chairman. No. No. Uh, no. Okay. All right. No, they, they are independent elected board. We we do not have any control over. I shouldn't say control. They're not under our you know organizational but, structure. So okay, say. but I mean, if they weren't doing a good job, you have the power to oust them. No. 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 Okay, so we gotta. Um, I gotta be crucified for my property. Uh, um, pay a hundred percent more taxes because of that board. Okay, and then on top of it, you have. Uh, do you have control over that guy that uh, Dave's operation that comes in and say, okay, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. Do we have the ability to to, to can them? Oh, does the board? The contracts are are under the purview of the of the select board through the recommendation of the the committees but the actual assessors manage them as a, as their contractor right so so um 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 mr Donald, who has a question may there? i ask you a question sure so this is just I, i've been thinking about this a lot and i was at that meeting and i'm just um, I tried to consider it from the other angle. You said you purchased the property for two hundred and fifty thousand. No, no, uh, four, uh, four, four fifty. Four fifty. Excuse yeah. me. And now it's being evaluated at one million dollars. Right. So why? And this again, this isn't leading anywhere. Why wouldn't you look at that as something that? Oh wow, I now have a million dollar property. Why? I, I understand the tax aspect of it, but would you ever sell? Would you ever look at it that way? Why is this inspiring anxiety as opposed to a potential, you know, windfall? That's a, if, if the I'm, it's, it's a genuine is, question. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm oh, trying yeah. to okay. just get yeah. the um, Easy to answer. It's not worth it. I have a house next to me that's 750, right? It's been on the market for three years. Okay. It's not worth it. You know, it's a small house. I can't get a million dollars for that house or the land. Now we're talking about the land, right? Not the house. What's yep. going to happen when the house comes into play? Zoom. You know, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's just, um, it doesn't make any sense. I can't get a million dollars for it because it's not worth it. So you're and, saying they're evaluating it at something that you would never be able to sell it for. Right. Exactly. It's a tiny house. <coughs> the house on, um, Parkhurst had just sold a million five, okay, and it's huge, right? And and they say it's not on the water. How's that? Is that something canal. wrong? It's not on the water. It's on the canal. Yeah. I think this is so, this board has probably has a, you know, some some questions that we'd like to you know have it, answered because this is this situation is new to me. So I'm still trying to get myself acclimated too. So Brian, you had something. I was just going to say I can appreciate the the anxiety because it's it puts people in a position where this might have been a property that's been in the family for 40, 50 years. They have no intent on selling. It's something that they'll come to during the summer to use the pond because it's you know unlike Assawamset, which I guess you can put a small boat in if you have property there. You can't use Elder's Pond. You can't really do much on Loon Pond. Long Pond's the only one you can actually do things in, which is why I think they put a higher value on it. Right. But if you have no intent of selling, you want to just keep it in the family, now your bill is going up, 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 up. So it's kind of like an unrealized gain, even though the house might be worth it. I'm just giving an example. Yeah. You know, if you have no intent of selling it, it's kind of like, well, now I've got this, you know, big rock on my shoulder I have to worry about. I think that, you know, through the assessment process, um, you know, it, Properties are evaluated all the time. So I know I've seen an increase, and I'm sure that the other um, members here have seen an increase, mm -hmm. but um, you know, it's been gradual, and I know that I have to obviously tighten up a little bit because um, you know, I've got to pay my, my taxes, but, um, but the jump that you're receiving and that the other members are receiving, you know, I probably would be feeling the exact same way. Like, I, don't, I wouldn't know how I would approach this, so. Um, but I will absolutely get back to you and let you know. Um, Could I um, answer this young lady? Oh, sure. Um, I, I paid 450. I made a comment. There was um, the evaluations on the pond vary big time, mm -hmm. and it, the lowest one was um, 250, and it was equal to my house. So you know. what's wrong there? You know. Right. So I mean, we have an emergency, right? 
and I'm asking you to squash this right right away and uh, send out new tax bills so we just um, you know uh, just put it under the rug somebody made a big mistake if you want to keep the board and you want to keep Dave's um, business um, going here because uh, like I said and you saw it yourself there was an elderly lady that didn't even live on the pond and she got taxed 40 to 50 percent and she was almost in tears okay and I was almost in tears to see her there okay and we're not gonna you know I'm not trying to uh, play hardball but we're not going to take take this okay I've been in touch with the state mm -hmm. they told me to come down here and talk to you and just ask you one more time right that what the board would do okay it might not uh, amount to anything but they did respond back to me which I was in shock okay and they asked me to ask you to help us if you're going to help us okay that's all okay i'm not going to go in i appreciate everything and i'm sad that i have to come down here and um but um it it's is what it is and it's kind of like business okay it's all about money okay and um uh, but the okay. residents okay i'm all done make, all right thank you comment. very much Please. I, I have heard people suggest that oh it's a hard budget year they're coming to pull money away from us to fill in the budget gaps that is not even close to true not even like we have no connection to the assessors when it comes to the budget no we need to find a few more bucks so let's just nip that in the bud um it does it takes two to three years i think they explain for all the real estate transactions to work their way in the system and two or three years ago we saw crazy numbers happening i'm i'm sure i'm probably next in line you know once it catches up to me um but i mean i'm not going to sit here and say if their numbers are right or wrong I mean, that is a process that we rely on the Board of Assessors. I mean, Leah has been part of the Board of Assessors in the past. She can explain it far better than I. But we do need to make sure that it's being done correctly, fairly, and equitable. Okay. And if there, are, if there are properties that have wild differences in valuation that, for all intents and purposes, look the same, they have the same views of the palm, they have the same kind of house, the same kind of amenities, the same this, that, and they're wildly different, well, it's, it's worth a discussion. Sure. Um, but it, it is hard to look in any one neighborhood and pick two parcels and say these should be the same why are they different sometimes there's very different reasons for why one might be more than the other it's, well, we, it's we have a, a professional company now doing it right mm -hmm. and telling us what and it, you know it it uh, when there again going back to um, it's almost favoritism you know some people uh, are valued at 250 some are at a million some are at um, 50 percent and it's like uh you know you don't mind going up um because we're on the pond okay not a problem but a uh, hundred percent uh something is wrong something is definitely wrong the, the and market was crazy absolutely nuts. so we got, the market's we, wrong. we got uh we got an agency that is just um just out of control and uh, you tell me that you can't do anything about it it's shocking shocking mr kovicki what's the size of your parcel Oh, it's, it's, I don't know, 50 by 50. Two okay. bedrooms. 176 acres. 250. And the funny thing is, the septic system passed, right, and the board de um, denied it and wanted me to put in a $60,000 system, right? A $60,000 system. You imagine that? Yep. Unbelievable. I said, okay, I'm not going to do that because I would not have parking. So I agreed to put the tight tank in. I had to go through unbelievable, but I put the tight take in, but the system passed. Okay, well, I could have put a regular system, but I saluted the board and did what they said. And, you know, we're going to do that, put the tight tank in for the protection of the pond. Okay, so uh, it's, it just, it's just a sad, very sad, and I, I just can't believe that... Um, and I, I, I have to understand that you can't help us out, okay? You can't help Mr. Day. You can't help us out, can you? We, we have statutory requirements that we have to follow that the Board of Assessors has to follow. We, we can't step in and say, we're gonna carte blanche, chop everybody's tax bill, because next year is gonna be another group of people, and it's gonna be a secular process. So we have to make sure that we're doing it by the book or else we're gonna be in big trouble. I'm not saying that I like this situation, but we have to be on the straight and narrow. And if there are legitimate 
issues and concerns, then those have to go through the abatement processes. We have to understand why there are differences mm -hmm. and follow through on it. Okay, I'm not sitting so here thinking, squeeze every nickel we can out of people. That's, I'm not even trying to give that Well, perception. I'm not saying that at all. You know, I just and I'm, some people I, I, I'm saying the people on Long Pond, um, they're getting um, <clears throat> taxed out of the... And so I'm just saying you have to do something right away about that. And these and, were preliminary bills. So later in the year, the actual bills will come out once the tax rate's been set. Help me out on time frames here, Leah. Yeah, November. So early it's December, right? possible that these numbers even change by the time we get there. But I mean, at, at, with the meeting is, um, you have to look, well, you have to look at the meeting. I'll, I'll bring some points, point this out to you maybe next time, right? And um, <clears throat> so, uh, I don't know where, uh, what to say. You know, I'm just one person here, and. Uh, but I'm sure that your voice um, represents a lot. A lot. Yeah. So yeah. I, I know for one, I'm very thankful that you reached out. You know, directly. We had a great conversation yeah. the other day. Yeah. You were fantastic. Um, so, we've um, also asked our treasurer, who's sitting right behind you, that um, to help folks if they need some sort of a payment plan she can so people need to just reach out to the treasurer's office until we can get to that actual and in the meantime it's not like we're not doing anything we're asking them for all their information too we're asking them for you know the math we're asking them for all the same things that everyone was asking them for at the meeting so you know um yeah we we want to know too yeah, I appreciate that. They explain that, you know, we could do this and that, save a couple hundred bucks or um, thing, um, you know, which is great. You know, you understood, but people did, you know, were upset, 100% uh, um, up. And it's like, uh, uh, you know, we just uh, can't, can't absorb that, or can't absorb that, right? Either you move out or you pay the taxes or you don't pay the taxes. Say, I don't pay my taxes, what's gonna happen? It's gonna take you a couple of years for to get me out of there. And then, you know, and you have to go through all kinds of paperwork and da 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 And then at the end, I pay the taxes, right? Yep, through the bank when you sell the house, if the house is foreclosed on, yeah. Well, no, I mean, I'm not even going to um, um, sell the house. I'm going to stop paying my taxes until you come after me, right? How long would that take? You don't have to answer that. Yeah, but, you know, I, that, that I don't even know yeah, either. Okay. But, yeah. All right. <laughs> well, right. It's a process. Long time. Yeah. A long, I see a long time, a long, a couple of years, right? Through courts, all kinds of things, cost, cost. It's just like, uh, okay. All right. Well, anyway, um, I appreciate it. And uh, it's obvious that uh, you're going to do the best you can yeah. for us. And I appreciate that, right? Or for all the residents, right? Okay, thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. it. Glad you came. Are there Noel Willow about the same subject? Um, can I just, I'm just wondering, can, can yeah, I make a suggestion? Have, just a couple of moments because uh, yeah, Mr. Vicky I know. Had reached, reached okay. out. About the math, it might be reassuring for some of these people if David Golden and his consulting group were to, you know, like when you get a job done, you get three estimates. How about getting a different consulting group to go in blind, blind, and doing the same work, finding out what the numbers are that they come up with? It's just I, I think that, the, you know, you're, it's a definitely out of the box, you know, kind of thought process. This is something that I would, I would have to put toward the, the assessors. I think it's so. reasonable, and I just, I, my heart goes out to these yeah. people. It's Mr. just a thought. Mr. Jones? Madam Chair, uh, the contract is, is expires at the end of the year. It's up. So oh, there will be, so I'm sure the Board of Assessors will start the procurement process. Okay, thank you very much. Um, anybody else have something for select board announcements? Come to mind? Okay. Mr. Nunes. Thank you. Um, a few things. First, I've reached out to Taunton Water. Uh, so I will, uh, we're in the process of scheduling a meeting. Okay. Uh, and I'll report back uh, after we do have that meeting. I'll be working with Nate uh, in Taunton Water to, to provide some uh, answers to some of the questions that uh, were brought up at the last uh, meeting. 
Um, several weeks ago, I had a meeting with the uh, town accountant, the superintendent of the school district, the business manager of the school district, and representatives of the uh, Lakeville and uh, Freetown uh, School Committee. Uh, we talked about the fiscal year 25 budget, the fiscal year 24 audit, uh, budgeting policies and procedures, best practices, next steps. Uh, the school committee will be reaching out to firms who specialize in education budgeting, and they'll be looking at the policies and procedures uh, of the district. Um, so I, I assume they're going through that process now. The district will, the school district will be uh, covering the cost um, uh, of that um, exercise. Um, and the last thing, uh, yes, yes. I just recently found out that MRI our search company for town administrator has an investigating side to it. Oh, I don't know. If well, you I don't to... know that. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know that either. Um, yeah. I think they call it investigating, not auditing or. Right, right. But I guess they do that. So, yeah. Good you to know. Pass that along. Yeah. Uh, and the last thing, uh, the DPW uh, director and I had a meeting uh, with Beta Group. As you know, they are overseeing the Route 79 project. Uh, the, the, they gave us a project update. The property appraisals and acquisitions, the process will start in the fall. There will be a representative uh, going to each of the property owners. There are 94 pri private properties in Lakeville and Taunton. As you know, most of them are in Lakeville. Uh, to talk about the appraisal and acquisitions if they are needed. Uh, and there are three public properties along, along the route. And we talked about the construction schedule. It will start in the spring of 2026. And the project duration is two, two and a half to three years. So that is it, Madam Chair. I just have one thing on the Route 79. Again, yes. as we had talked at our last meeting, um, that anything that is going to be coming up that will affect the services or impact the residents that we want to make sure that we give them notice. So if this is coming up, I know that the Route 79 project, um, part of it was the outreach to the community. I know that they have yep. had some outreach to it. I just want to make sure that the residents um, that are directly impacted by um, the land taking and are given notice that this is you know, to be expecting that somebody this will be will knocking be on their door we'll do or that. scheduling an appointment. We'll do that. So, all right, thank you. Anybody else have any questions for Mr. Nunes? It's probably just worth repeating that Route 79 is not a state road, <laughs> it's a town road, even though it's named. Also, if anybody drives by the DPW, take a look at the building. The old garage is all painted to match the new side now. They oh, got wow. their, their seal up front. It looks top notch over there now. Should take it right over. Okay, uh, a couple of selectmen, uh, a select board member meeting minutes here, June 24th and July 8th. If we can just take them separately. Did everybody have an opportunity to review them? Mm -hmm. All right, I'll hear, entertain a motion for July 24th, approval of the minutes. So move. I have to abstain. Okay. June 24th? Yes, June, right? Did I say that? June 24th? Yes. So. Okay. June 24th, I will second. Okay. I did have one thing that it's, I think it's just maybe a typo, but page five, last sentence. Um, we had been talking about the um, comprehensive permit for the Baron, and we had talked about closing out after phase five because phase six was what was coming in front of us. That's yeah, a new one, yeah. Right? So we, I think that six just needs to be changed to a five, Tracy. Okay. Um, I do wanna bring to the discussion that um, Ms. Fabian and Donahue were not here, so they cannot vote on the minutes. Yes, they can. They can? Yeah, absolutely. Even though they weren't present? Yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah but I can second the motion. Sure. Okay, any further discussion? Any other? Hearing none, um, roll call vote, please. Baby and I. John, you aye. Carboni, aye. Three aye. Okay, uh, select board minutes of July 8th. 
entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Any second? Second. All right. Any discussion? Hearing none. Uh, roll call vote, please. Baby and I. Johnny, do I? Carboni, I. Stay abstain. Did you get all that, Tracy? Yep. Excellent. Okay. Now we would like to revisit the discussion for the treasurer collector um, for town owned properties. Uh, Erica, if you wouldn't mind joining us at the table, that would be great. And um, Nate Darling, our. I, I always You're mess up the title. Support. Special <laughs> Services <laughs> Director um, is with us this evening as well. So um, I know that this was has been on our agenda for the last three meetings and we keep whittling it down a little bit more. So I know that we had um, talked a little bit about um, some of the questions that had come out about the buildable and non-buildable and the assessed value, uh, which is why we are here once again this evening. So um, the board has something saw that differently, let me know. Um, but anyways, I'd like to say thank you for being here. So what did you, um, when you were going through this list again, if you couldn't mind just get, giving us a, an update? Certainly. Um, so we actually met today, myself, um, Nate, and Mr. Noons, um, to discuss the parcels in question. Um, I guess we kind of came to an understanding that the last three, the Central Ave, the South Ave, and Walnut Street, out of this group would be the three, I guess, most beneficial out of this group mm -hmm. to move forward with. Okay. Right. And I believe we have some maps in front of us too that have these on here. Is that true? I didn't have a chance to take a look. So it should be the last two pages, I believe, um, will be the three parcels in question. And how long have these been with us? Um, the one on Central Ave? Central Ave, we took the end of uh, 2018. However, okay. there was an issue with that one and we had to pretty much evict somebody. Um, so it that became a process. Um, so I wanna say last September, I believe, going there, changing locks and everything. Um, then the other two, oh, so, if I remember. I'm so, I apologize to interrupt. Did you say just last September we changed the locks? Yeah. Five it years took, later? It took that long to get for the person out. Um, wow. Excuse me. Yeah, they were pretty much squatting, I would say. Okay. Yikes. Sorry for interrupting. No, that's okay. Um, and then the last two, everything I believe went through. Ugh. I believe 20, 22 or 23, I can't honestly remember, but it was um, during my time here. The same time, time frame you said? Um, it was when I got here. Oh, okay. So it was in motion when I was okay. here, but it actually um, became the towns while I was here. Okay, so I know that with this map, um, South Street and Walnut Street are on here, but I see the Walnut Street, is South Street on here? So yeah, South Street, they're both together. South Street and Wall in Walnut Street. They are. They're like okay. Yeah, and those those are properties. So so those are properties that are merged into one. So we can't sell we can't sell them separately. So when they come into common ownership and they're pre-existing non-conforming, they merge um, as one. Right. So when the town took those properties, um, they had already merged, and then we we took them. So they have to be sold together. Okay, because I'm just trying to understand on the map because only one yellow was on yeah, here. So it's just I guess I, that's it was, where I was, it was confused. It was, yeah, it was quick. <laughs> so it's it's the one um, towards the pond of that yellow box um, is is the second parcel. Is the South Street parcel? Oh, okay. So it would be four. this one and this one. Yep. And so those are now one parcel. Exactly. Yep. It would have to be sold together. Sold this one. Yep. Okay. All right. 
So you're saying it, it would be this guy over here? Yep. No. This, this one here? Yep. So um, the one that you see the three on it that's highlighted yep. in yellow, that's the Walnut Street parcel. The one that you see four just to the right of it is the South, four South Street. Four, yeah, it's right. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I thought it was a six. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. And now with those together, it becomes a buildable lot, but there's already a dwelling on the other one. So exactly. So it's a it's a it's a single buildable lot, but there's a house on it. So it's afforded yeah. grandfathered protection um, having the house on it. And and so just to back up a little bit, we've we've concentrated on the improved properties because the vacant properties aren't something that we're rushing or I personally wouldn't recommend rushing to sell. Uh, because there's there's a lot of different pieces in that, and that's why we kind of got to collaborate and make sure Board of Health, Conservation, uh, Tax Collective, Building, um, Select Board are all involved because, you know, we're, we're looking at um, ways to better public health, public safety. So if somebody has a, a property, as Mr. Kubicki mentioned before, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 um, for a septic system, if we were able to sell a piece of, a small piece of uh, property, um, they're able to improve their septic system and it kind of makes it more reasonable for them to do that if they have the additional land. Um, but the, the improved lots, the ones with the house on it, obviously become a, a, an attractive nuisance. And um, I'm out looking at both of these uh, every single week to make sure that there's no break-ins and you know you have other, other situations that are, that are going on that are not being uh, maintained right now. So um, the sooner that we can get those back on the tax roll makes a lot of sense to me. And then the vacant ones, we need to come together as a group um, and evaluate the, the benefits of uh, maintaining ownership. If they provide for a wildlife corridor or we can use them to offset, um, you know, construction within that map um, priority habitat, natural um, and, yeah, uh, priority uh, habitat, like on Ted Williams camp. Right. Um, so you know, we're, we are already looking at some of that. If we were gonna build um, a fire station, uh, for example, if there's three acres, we gotta come up with four and a half acres uh, somewhere that natural heritage will take um, in, as mitigation for construction in mapped areas. So we wanna evaluate the vacant parcels, um, whether or not that it would work towards it that. It would be conducive to that kind of mitigation. Okay, that makes that absolute sense. Anybody on the board have any questions um, regarding this? Because I, I don't yeah. even know what our next steps would be on this. But. And there's a few of them we haven't talked about, and we don't have to keep going on it. But there is a few where I kind of had notes here, like, could we sell this to an abutter, split it between two abutters, depending. I was interested in 126 Hemlock and 119 Howland. 119 Howland is like, without knowing more about it, it looks like a perfect conforming lot at 1.66 acres. Do we know, like, anything about that parcel? <laughs> is it the 126 Hemlock, did you uh, say? 119, oh, 119. Hemlock. Uh, sorry, 119 Howland Road. So 119 Howland Road, I took a quick look at that, um, went into Plymouth County, looked at the, um, the deeds and, and, and how the town came to own it. Um, I suspect that it was another situation where it was held in common ownership, and that's why taxes weren't paid on it. It was it's not buildable lot mm -hmm. um, because it was uh, held in common with an adjacent lot. And I won't go into a great detail mm -hmm. with that because the other lot that it was held in common ownership is now built upon. Um, so you, we we need to be cognizant of that even when we take property. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times when you have a subdivision, let's say it was prior to 1959, there was no zoning in Lakeville. The Lakeville established zoning in 1959. Anything that was created, legally created before 1959, the state says that it needs 50 feet of frontage and 5,000 square feet of land to be grandfathered in perpetuity as a residential lot. So when Lakeville adopted zoning in 59, we were looking at 100 feet of frontage um, in a 20,000 square foot lot. That subsequent, subsequently went to 150 feet of frontage with 30,000, and then went to where we are today with 70,000 square foot lots and 175 feet of frontage. Mm -hmm. So if you got a subdivision in the late 60s, for example, you'd have 30,000 square foot lots. Well, all of a sudden you go, you know, 50 years, um, lots will come into common ownership and, and they merge. So they're no, they're no longer protected at that point. And that's most likely what happened here. If you look at that one, um, it's only has 150 feet of frontage. So it is one of the neighboring lots I noticed. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, a few of them do actually. 
So, you know, th this begs the question, and, and Brian, I know you've mentioned it up as, uh, you know, land, uh, mentioned this before, as land use um, advisory committees or, or mm -hmm. you know, um, acquisition or, um, uh, you know, disposition uh, type groups where you have a group of land use folks, um, Board of Health, Conservation, uh, Select Board, Planning Board, um, Zoning Enforcement Officer, to look at these properties before we take them. Um, also look at them um, when we're ready to dispose of them to make sure individually we can't look at every town property and say this is what we think of these. Mm -hmm. um, put small groups like this, this was not cumbersome at all um, to look through, right? It was, it was something that was achievable. Um, start working through them and then we'll, we can make uh, recommendations to the select board. Yeah. Madam Chair, on that same line, uh, Member Day, myself, uh, members of the Board of Assessors, uh, We've been meeting, well, we, we haven't met in about a month or so, a month and a half, uh, but I'll get back to the board with a proposal um, of this type of committee to review okay. these type policies. Well, that would be great. Um, I have a question on the Hemlock Shore property. It says it was last assessed in 2019. It's a one acre parcel in the same general vicinity as all these other people whose property taxes have gone up. It's assessed at $130,000 as a buildable one acre lot across from the water. Is that assessment? Where does it, excuse up to me, date? I'm so sorry. Yeah. Where does it say that it was assessed in 19? Uh, I'm sorry, that might be wrong. It says town's name 81319. Okay, that's when it went into the town's name. That's when the town took ownership of it. That's okay. not when it was last assessed. So this was last assessed at $130,000. Correct. So the part I don't understand, and I'm sorry we're bringing it back to that conversation, is that when we were at that, at that meeting, people were talking about how they have a half acre parcel, how they have a 0.8 acre parcel being assessed at $800,000, and that was only the land. So how is a one acre parcel that's bigger than all of those being assessed at one hundred and thirty thousand. Unfortunately, I have to talk to the assessors. I don't do the it's, assessments on I'm it. in a market. It's possible, <laughs> it's possible that it's, since it's town owned and it's not part of the tax roll, that it's not being assessed. But it's been updated. But does that mean it would be auctioned at one hundred thirty thousand? Oh no, I don't think so. No. no. So if Madam Chair, if, if yes. I if I can, so so the one thing about this particular property is on the opposite side of Hemlock Shore Road mm -hmm. than the, than the water. So it, it, from what I understand, it, it wouldn't be assessed at that same value because it's not in the waterfront. Um, the piece of uh, it being one acre, and this has come up through a handful of developers that have looked to acquire this land for. Um, probably about the last decade. Uh, every time somebody goes and looks at it, they try to do a perk test on it and they're not able to get a septic system design there. From my understanding, um, it's been uh, the biggest crux of why that was never developed. Uh, from a zoning perspective, I have looked at it um, and I've got a legal opinion um, that it could be a grandfathered lot, meaning that it was established uh, prior to a zoning change that made it non-conforming. So most likely that's a conforming buildable lot from zoning. And again, I don't provide advisory committees, but that's my general feeling that would have to be proven out. Um, but there are Board of Health and septic um, implications um, that make it not buildable. Um, and that's again why, you know, when, when we may wave a wand and, and, and call something buildable or not buildable, I mean, that's what we've done historically. It's unfortunate because all of these things can change. Um, my thoughts on it is we have to um, expect something's buildable until proven otherwise. Um, in, in, in a best case scenario, if somebody is going to claim the benefit of an unbuildable lot, um, it would be prudent to put a covenant or a deed restriction on that lot stating that to get that tax relief. Um, all too often we see things change and things miraculously become buildable when they were taxed as unbuildable lots for a long, long time. Um, so, you know, we are working through that. I work, have a good relationship with the assessor, so I help out where I can. Um, and, you know, this comes back to creating policy or, or procedure. Um, so when, the, when land is deemed unbuildable, we have more eyes on it to, to justify that determination. Thank you. So my next question, based on what you just said, um, process, procedure, uh, where auction is, is one avenue that can be utilized, right? Mm -hmm. And the other would be for sale with, through a realtor, correct? Because I know I've been familiar with both, I guess. Well, no, the town could, if I may, yes. the town could have an auction or solicit proposals. 
okay. and the written, you know, have to advertise it and have folks submit a proposal. Okay. You don't, you don't necessarily have to hire a realtor. Okay. All right. We could do it on our own, or we could do it without a realtor. All right. I've seen it done both ways. So, I don't know what our next steps would be. Um, I mean, does the board need to vote to? Um, do we know if any of these properties are under our care and custody right now, or are some of them still under the treasurer collectors? Do they need to be transferred I first? I believe they're under mine. Okay. They're and yours? Two. Yeah. Okay. They would need to be transferred. So you need a town meeting vote to transfer before anything could happen. Okay. All right. So that would be our next step, right? We'd have to put them on for the fall. And we'd have to decide which ones we would want to put on as well. Okay. So there's more conversation that we'll have to do. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, from this discussion, so it sounds like an six Central Ave and four South slash three Walnut appear to be good candidates. They're already built on. We've been losing revenue for six years now on one of them. All right. So what does this board have to do this evening? Remember when the warrant comes up for town meeting? Right. I'm making a note. <laughs> <laughs> Action item, Tracy. <laughs> All right. All right. So I really think that, you know, based on what you had presented here this evening, um, where you said it was, wasn't a heavy lift to, to meet on this, I think, you know, forming that, um, you know, that working subgroup, I think, well, one, I think it will help educate those that are on it and the rest of us a little bit more about the type of property and zoning that we have currently. Um, so I think there'll be a, a, you know, an educational, you know, perspective to it as well as um, trying to look at the best interest of, of Lakeville and how to utilize the property that we have for the betterment of others. Yeah, it's fostering um, working collaboratively too. I mean, we really, yeah. you know, over the years, a lot of times we work in silos. You hear it all the time about, you know, becoming more transparent. That's a difficult thing to do. I think many people want to do that. So when you create collaborations and working groups like this to um, put out work product, I think you can you can't ever lose, regardless of the, uh, you know, the details and what you find out. Right. Oh, I think it's great. I really appreciate you putting the time into this. So, mm -hmm. um, so I know Mr. Nunes is going to be, you know, working on what that's going to look like for that, you know, subgroup, and then there may be some additions to fall town meeting. So, just a question. Yes, do we know if the ones on South and Walnut have ever flooded? So I, I was involved in the 2010 flooding, both from the fire department perspective and building um, department perspective. And, and the water did go across um, South Ave. Um, but you, if you look at the lines on the map, the theme, these are um, generated using LIDAR. Um, it, they're almost spot on uh, now to what we saw in, in 2010. So the water lines on that did go across. They, I do believe they went across South Ave. They just didn't go all the way to the house, exactly. So they, they crossed um, South Ave just to the uh, east of the property in almost a three wall nut um, where there's a um, small um, isolated uh, wetland, but, but not, not over the house. So the house is not the flood zone. Um, Leah, you, you, you mentioning that brings up a good point. Um, the fire chief was looking at grant opportunities um, for properties in the flood zone that perhaps we're taking in, in, in tax title. Um, if we could uh, actually acquire, um, raise the structure and naturalize it to better retain flood waters, uh, mitigate flood waters or compensatory storage for other areas that are being paved or built upon. Um, so we were looking at that even for central because of the close proximity to the other homes, that if we were able to, you know, it's, it's hard to justify losing what might be 150,000 or $200,000 in, in sales on that, on that property um, to tear it down and sell um, half to each of the abutting properties for eight or 10,000 a piece. 
Um, but we've talked about the nitrogen sensitivity uh, in the Clackshaws area and the yeah. fact that um, there's a lot of wells being contaminated. Um, we are searching, actively searching for grant opportunities uh, to mitigate this, either with the Clean Water Trust or um, avenues like that to, to maybe help the town um, take those properties that are currently built on tear them down, naturalize them, or sell them to a, um, an abutter uh, for betterments of uh, their septic systems. Yeah. And um, part of the APC, so the Swamps Pond Complex work with their list of ways to deal with the flooding. One is the municipalities buy the properties around the water so folks aren't displaced right. or otherwise affected. I mean, you know, we already mm -hmm. own it, but you know, that would be my only consideration. Are we just creating a problem again by selling it to someone and then, you know, they move in and then they flood? That's a good point. I hadn't thought of that perspective. Yeah, so, so that's... Our properties um, turn over or sell pretty quick down in that area right now. So yeah. People yeah. have taken that into consideration. Mm -hmm. But so that's what the hundred year flood zone I see, one percent chance. One percent. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But it was just a couple months ago where we had folks sitting here saying, you know, I just bought my house and mm -hmm. you know, the town was supposed to have worked on the flooding issues and one of the tasks was <laughs> to buy the properties around and I mean that's for Assawampset too, not right. long, not just Long Pond, whatever, but yeah, and um I don't know if I'd be jumping to try to sell this until maybe it has a better use. And again, we could always use the money, but. Yeah. Well, it's a risk to leave it as is as well. Right. I mean, people could be squatting in the air, dragged yeah. in there and hurt. I mean. Yeah. And to keep it and to, you know, raise the building is more expensive. So it's, it would cost us money. So I just want to be to evaluate it before we jump, you know, discussed. It's more of the, the softer um, side of things. And um, well, you would have to decide, uh, you know, I would assume transfer would go into DPW. That's, you know, and then parks, what are you going to do with parks? Right, because there's um, not a director, a parks right. director. Exactly. And where, and where would the parks department lie? Right. So those are the kind of things that, you know, we need to talk about. So, um, well, if I, if I may, Matt, yes. it could also be a, you know, crawl, walk, run. I mean, we don't have to do everything in one fell swoop. Um, I mean, the budgetary method of enterprise now just isn't working. Um, I mean, we could change that and then figure out what to do at some point in the future. Um, I mean, is there, is there any kind of, um, is this as simple as if, if there's a positive vote, the enterprise goes away and it just becomes another account in the general fund? Well, it would be or just a budget. Yeah. It would be a budget. Okay. It would, you know, right now it's a budget in the enterprise. That would be taken out and it would just be part of the general budget. fund. Okay. All right. And it would be reported that way to the Department of Revenue as a general fund. So would the Parks Commission still be elected? Yes. Oh, yeah. They, they, you know. they would you be know. more in charge of like, programming and the town administrator would have more influence, I guess, over their budget. Yeah, it's so however you set it up. Whether or not you go with a director or, you know, foreman, whatever it may be. Yeah. yeah. And I believe um, Middleborough does have the same um, type of infrastructure where they do have an elected parks commission. Um, I believe they have a parks director, but everything is um, a department. It's not an enterprise. I mean, it's interesting, too, because if you go back to 1990 when this happened, which I believe was primarily during a budget crisis. There was a huge budget crisis. And they did this yeah. to keep, like, Clear Pond open, is what I'm told. I but mean, that was my understanding as well. And, and if you look at, like, Article 6, it basically says, Park Department of Management supervise the recreational portion of Ted Williams Camp. Pond, equipment building, bathrooms, basketball court, tennis courts, and six ball fields. So it's, like, so out of date already. <laughs> There's lots of other stuff there mm. besides those now. Um, so it's like we're already kind of behind the times and need to re-up some of these things. I mean, I'm on board with working on the transfer station. 
but I think the parks is just a lot more work. How would it change though? That's just a budgetary difference. If we change nothing else besides enterprise to general fund. Um, I think the parks has more of an emotional component to it. And um, we only have Bob till October. And I don't know that we can get that done. And then I'm not sure what, what we may have to do in the interim, without an interim. Well, if we can just make a, a note on this, the, the side and we'll, I guess we'll continue to do some research and maybe things will fall into to line. If not, we can focus on the DPW and yeah, parts would come later or they can be done at the same time. I, I don't want to let emotional things cause us to make a decision that doesn't potentially benefit the parks either. I mean, we're constantly transferring money into there now. And this would make it easier to do that if we need to. I think they, they only have upsides here, personally. All right, so we'll, we'll keep this going. That'll still be one of those hot breathing things that are, not that we're kicking it down the road, but we will. Um, and if we could, I guess what would be very helpful um, is what would be involved other than just town meeting vote. Like maybe we can really, you know, kind of put some bullet points around what we would need to look at too. Like Pros you and said. cons. Hmm? Pros and cons. An action item. Yeah. A cool list of how we would proceed. <laughs> Perfect. All right, anybody else on that? No, I mean, I just think we should offer the parks or anyone else the opportunity to speak to it. Of course. So, yeah, that's where I think some of the emotion will come into play. So, mm -hmm. you know, I agree. Okay, um, so we have a request in front of us this evening from the town clerk um, regarding the early voting locations because we all know how our town clerks love early voting. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got August and October. Uh, currently. It's been in the old townhouse, and there's been some renovation work being done there. So um, another, an, an alternate location has been um, identified, and our town clerk has looked at multiple options. And the option that has come in front of us this evening is the Lakeville Public Library. Um, I'll for make the <laughs> right. <laughs> Yes, um, there's a nice letter um, that our town clerk has put together for us to kind of give us the history as to where it is. And, um, so anybody have any comments or questions at this point? I'll make a motion to change the 2024 early voting dates for the months of August and October from the Old Town Hall to the Lakeville Public Library per the memo from the town clerk. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll, please. Baby and I. Johnny, you aye. Carboni, aye. Day, aye. Thank you. I'm sorry, that, was that to change the dates or the location? Location. Oh, okay, sorry. Thank you. Location. And the dates um, of the early voting will be um, very well publicized on the town clerk's page. <laughs> that office is very good about that. Okay, number nine, um, I know that um, there was some question about us being and you know having our hours at the senior center the, the second Friday of every month. I had asked Tracy just to put this grid together um, and then we can just quickly go down, pick our month. There's five months here, five of us and um, and I'm, We'll just mark it off and then we'll all get a copy. So if there's a problem, I know um, Member Fabian has um, been 
very generous in you know being able to back us up if if needed. So um, I'll start with B. Uh, September thirteenth works for me. If anybody else. So what's the time again? It's for, it's at ten or eleven. Uh, 10 to 11. 10 to 11, right? Okay. On Friday, the second Friday. Yep. Hey, Brenna, I know you've already done one. Is there another one that you would like to... Um, I mean, I thought it was fun. I'll be honest, I thought we were doing this every Friday. So every second Friday is not a big deal. I can take any that people don't want. Okay. I have no problem. All right, Brian, I know your schedule is... Yeah, I, I already can't do September and October. Okay. I'm looking at the other ones now. And Leah, you're open, right? Yep. Okay. Looks like either the November or December one I can, I can do. Okay. Let's put you down for November. All right. All right, and we have one in August. Um, I don't know about Maureen. Um, she can maybe reach out to... Uh, to Laurie on that, I guess. Brenna, did you want to do October? Sure, I'll do October. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you good with August? Yep. Okay. And then I'll do December if Maureen can. Okay. If that's okay. Yep. So question Maureen, X Brenna. Okay. Tracy, I'll give you the grid and um, can share it with Laurie. Okay. Thank you everybody for entertaining me on that one. I appreciate it. I think it, it'll be easier for me to have it right in front of me too. And I'll put it, put my request in. Uh, okay, so every year um, we have to um, vote our designee to the MBTA Advisory Board. Leah has been um, gracious enough to be our representative um, for, gosh, it's been four years now, three years now? It's been five years. Five years? Mm -hmm. um, so with that, I'll entertain a motion um, to appoint Ms. Fabian again, unless somebody else is interested in um, being on the advisory board. Do you want to do it? Um, yeah, because I am the vice chair of the budget audit committee, so they probably, but again, I'll make the motion. All right, I have a motion. <laughs> second. And a second. Any discussion? You don't fix what this, is um, This motion would be um, with the term to expire July 31st, 2025. If we can just make sure that gets added in there, Tracy, please. Are we, we going to see you on like an inaugural ride of the South Coast Rail? Probably. <laughs> it really isn't that glamorous, but um, yeah. Well, let us know if um, there is going to be a... Um, like a christening, I know they've been doing their test runs, but if there's going to be like yeah. a christening run, um, I'm happy to pay my fare and I'll start in Fall River and go all the way up just to ride to see what it's like. Yeah, I experience. actually did put my name in to be on the subcommittee for the actual rail line, but Brian King called me and said, you sure you don't want to be on the budget committee? And I'm like, all right. <laughs> Oh, twist my arm, twist my arm. Okay, um, roll call vote, please. Baby and I. Donahue, aye. Carboni, aye. Aye, Excellent, you are now appointed once again. So we have a recommendation from our open space committee to appoint um, Elizabeth Nash as their representative to the Community Preservation Committee. They had a meeting and we received a memo from their chair. So I'll entertain a motion. And this is going to be with an expiration date I was just gonna ask of that. July 31st, 2026. Madam Chair, I am unable to confirm that because my computer is not working. Okay. So, um, if so let's do 2025. Off. And then if it, if it really needs based on the bylaw that it's the, the term, 26. then we'll, Bring it back to us like we've done in the past and vote for 26. Who, who is she replacing? Who would you replace? Is it Nancy or somebody else? Um, uh, space space was was Amy, Amy, Amy Knox. Knox. Oh, she's already off the list here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I can't get I can't get any money. Because there's no dates yeah. on those that list, right, Brian? I, I one, didn't the cross website it does have them for CPC. Uh, oh, which is on there. Yeah. 
Elizabeth's name is actually there with no term expiration date already. Amy's off the list. Okay. Um, On open space or CPC? CPC. Somebody already put Liz in the list. There you go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do it. <laughs> um, so do, there, is there a term next to it? No. I can tell you the ones that are there. There's three that expire 2025, three that expire 2024, one for 2026, and then there's an empty one next to Liz's so name. So she would be, it's a three-year appointment because they've already gone through their trial appointment. Are you, are you on oh, the open space page? I'm on the community, community preservation. preservation, yeah. We can confirm expiration at a later date, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we can, we can fix it at the next meeting, but if we have to. probably is 26 or 27. Okay. All right, then leave it at the 26, and if we have to come back okay. and ratify it, yeah. we will. Um, I make a motion to appoint Elizabeth Nash as the Open Space Committee representative on the Community Preservation Committee with a, an expiration date to be confirmed um, later than today. Second. Great. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Baby, aye. Donahue, aye. Carboni, aye. Day, aye. Okay. Our Chief Perkins um, has a request in front of us uh, to appoint Matthew Polikas uh, to be reappointed as constable, and that term would expire on June 25th, 2025. And we have a, an email that was passed out this evening um, in front of you that there are no issues with this appointment from our chief. So I'll entertain a motion. And this would be for civil process only. So moved. Second. Oh, okay. Any discussion? No. Nope. Hearing none. Roll, please. KB and I. Tony Q, I. Carboni, I. Day, I. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Now, this is usually a long um, list of uh, reappointments. And. Um, I'm happy to run through this. I've got a list presented. Hmm? I do list is presented. I just want to make sure that we have everybody. Well, I was going to have a couple questions here, if we may. Sure, um, sure. So basically, um, what is in front of us this evening, that any boards, committees, or commissions um, that are appointed through the select board is done on an annual basis with expiration dates usually um, the end of June so or the end of July so this reappointment would take place for August 1st so that's what's in front of us Brian yep thanks uh, I never make the mg &E meetings they're like early Wednesday evening so if there's somebody that can I'm happy to step back from that okay because I know that I time. I was the representative for a while there and I was yeah. attending and I ended up with a conflict um, so I wasn't able to to attend I find them to be very um, informative. Um, they talk about the, uh, you know, process through, you know, what's what's happening with the electrical and, you know, the, the rates and, and where they purchase, um, you know, electricity from, how it works, what's happening with the Middleborough Gas and Electric, how they look to provide community outreach um, to both communities and, um, so I do find it to be um, pretty informative if there's a member of the board that would be interested. I nominate Maureen. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. If you're not here, you get nominated. There you go. I think some of the other committees had said that too. Where is that, Brian, on here? Uh, it what page is, is it on? page 66 of our packet. Uh, it's, um, the top of the page is Larry Constant because it's the second half of the fire station. Oh, village. gotcha. Okay, that's yeah, how I missed it. Okay. All right. So, Brian. And I know that on one of them, we had for the town administrator search, I know that Tracy had brought it up earlier that Maureen's name was not on here, so I'd like to include Maureen Candido on here. Oops. 
I'm probably wasting more time. I could have just read through all of these. No, I, I had two other things, if I may. Sure. Um, EDC. Yep. I don't even want to reappoint anybody. Okay. Have they, when have they met? We haven't, <laughs> and um, I know that I'm on that, and I've I held firm to not um, dispose of that particular group. I'm just not sure. I mean, if no one's chomping at the bit to have you schedule a meeting, then let's find some folks that are interested. Okay. Nope, I think that would be great. Um, I think that there's opportunity here. I'm just not sure how to, we might have to revisit the charge. I but. think, uh, I agree with Brian. I think that we have lots of folks in town pushing back on economic development, but I think it's gonna require a little more outreach because economic development doesn't necessarily mean tearing trees down and nope. building. Nope. You know, it could no, be, it I don't know, trying to fill the industrial park we already have. It could be, you know, things like that. But I think right now the sentiment is just um, really tough that we don't want business. We don't, and, you know, I think what most of us want is not to tear down our trees. I don't think it's that, you know, we don't want any other business to come because we have some places where we could put them. So... Um, I think that needs a whole restart. No, I agree. It's because when I looked at the charge, I think they met the charge in what it was originally designed to do. No. Um, but at this point, I think that um, with the stumbling block, block right now is zoning um, and infrastructure. And so looking at the charge for that, that subcommittee to benefit the town of Lakeville um, economically based on the feedback that the residents have, I think we need to revisit the charge. So why don't we put that on a, another agenda and look at that? Works for me. Okay. And then my last question was, is there any need to reappoint the Senior Center Addition Feasibility Study Committee? Hasn't that been delivered now? Are we transitioning into mm -hmm. a building project basically? Yeah, I mean, it's, mo it's more turning into a building project right now, and I do believe we closed out all our business oh. with the um, contractor. We did that, I thought, didn't we, Bob? Didn't yes. we do that? We closed them out. We said that they fulfilled their obligation, the um, OPM there, nice. and with their feasibility study, and we agreed to pay them, and then this was a step beyond that. So um, I think this is more like a, a building project right now. So it's just kind of morphed into that. Um, you should redo the yeah, but it's not the whole committee. So okay. it's not so Katie we need DeRocher, to it's not me. Oh, okay. So, we so need they've to... been working on it as a staff. Hmm. All right. So do we need to dissolve this? It's up to you. Yeah. Yeah. Is that so, something that we'll have to add to the next agenda? as an agenda item to dissolve it. But good work anyways. I think yeah. there was a lot of... Yeah, it took a little longer than expected. we had thought. Yeah, but agreed. Yep. So maybe, um, I don't know if we just reappoint it or talk about it charge it up the change at this point hmm? wouldn't the charge up the change at this point if we yeah. kept it around yep and honestly the actual feasibility study is done so right. <laughs> yeah. it's so, the staff that's been working because like Darren and I and and Devaney don't go to those meetings it's the staff so Nate Bob Lori and Paul are basically just working on the project Okay, so it went from a feasibility, we had an outcome, and now it's a project through that. Okay, so we would have to dissolve that subcommittee then. All right, I'll just make a note for that to the next agenda. All right, so I think going back to my original, did anybody else have any questions about any of the, um, the appointments? Because I want to, I think we really need to run down these lists and, um, yeah, I think with the changes, we probably... Yeah, because there's some people that... What I would hope through the conversations going into next year, 
trying to realign these appointments with the election uh, would be if the people are interested in staying as the appointed member, maybe we have a form that they can fill out ahead of time to just check off to say, yes, I'm still interested. Because what, what happens, I think, once we appoint them, then they have to get sworn in, and then it's we get a letter that says they're not interested. <laughs> or, I don't think it happens often, but it happens. Am I misremembering? Mis At some point in the past, we asked to have attendance on some of these things to understand, like, because I don't know if everybody looked at their email, but right before we, our meeting, we got a message come in about attendance on one of the committees. I did not look at so, my email. Yeah, it came in what? Ten of five, maybe. Oh, so yeah, I, I not saw it as, my as I was leaving the house. Mm -hmm. So we have, I remember previous boards had requested um, attendance because where we're the appointing authority, we want to make sure that these boards, committees, and commissions are um, set up to succeed mm -hmm. and that they have the membership that is still interested in, in participating. So, um, Madam Chair? Yes. Um, that was a um, victim of COVID. Uh. The board at the time decided not to request that anymore because of COVID. Okay. Because, you know, people weren't meeting or people were staying at home because of COVID. So mm. it just kind of dropped off. All right. Well, I think we should reinstitute it. So I think we'll, we'll have a pass this time around. Um, but it I think we need to work. orient. It, it, is, it is a lot of work. A, right. a work. Yeah, well, we'll have to find a better way to make it work so it's not so cumbersome. But all right, one year renewals um, for j expiration dates ending July 31st, 2025. Um, for the police department, as presented for police officer constables, reserve police officer constable, special police officer matrons. Keeper of the lockup, surveyor of wood, bark, and lumber, fence viewer, and field driver. So moved. Second. Aren't we doing the whole, yeah. everything all the way down to the three years? Yeah, you can just make one motion and just okay. read all and the then, one years and then one motion for the three years. Okay, so this is still the one year. And then we have the 175th anniversary committee. The ADA coordinator, alternate building inspector, assistant building inspector, agricultural commission, assistant board of health agents, ASA Wamsit complex representative, board of appeals, cable advisory committee, capital expenditure committee, council on aging, emergency planning committee, Emergency Response Coordinator, Energy Advisory Committee, Fire Station Building Committee, GATRA Delegate, Hazardous Waste Coordinator, Historical Commission, Inspector of Milk, Inspector of Wires, Lake Cam, <clears throat> Lakeville Emergency Management Agency, Master Plan Imp Implementation Committee, Municipal Coordinator, Right to Know, Municipal Hearings Officer, NIMS Coordinator, Old Colony Planning Council Area Agency on Aging Advisory Committee, say that again, Open Space Committee, Plumbing and Gas Inspector, Public Health Nurse, Rent Control Board, Sailor of Weights and Measure, Smart Growth Reporting Officer, Special Assistant Health Agents, Stormwater Management Coordinator, Temporary Part-Time Nurse, Town Administrative Search Committee, including including Maureen, Maureen Candido, Candido. <coughs> Town Council, <coughs> excuse me, and Tree Warden, as presented. So moved. Second. Madam Chair, you did not do Senior Center, right? You took that out? Correct. Yep. Okay, thanks. And we also didn't do um, economic development. Okay. And Middleborough Gas and Electric. Correct. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's still, unless, you know, Brian wanted to add somebody on there. So we, can we just make a note I, that we have I to. I don't mind doing that one. We can do it after, Maybe we I guess, can, but. 
you know, we can do it all. I mean, I can fill in when. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. So we'll work on that one. All right. Um, roll call. Phoebe and I. Donahue, I. Carboni, I. Day, and then the next would be um, the motion to for three year renewals with an expiration date of July 31st, 2027. Police department, um, police officer and constable, uh, Agri Agricultural Commission, Board of Appeals, Board of Registrars, Community Preservation Committee, Conservation Commission, Council on Aging, Historic Commission, Historical Commission, Lakeville Arts Council, Town Forest Committee. Madam Chair? Yes. Oh, do you want the motion before um, discussion? One question. I think it's very important that you read the police officer's name. Joseph Cowan, police officer and constable. Did we get any information on the Conservation Commission member? No. Okay. Mm -mm. Anybody else? So, do we have a motion? No. So moved. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? Hearing none. Roll, please. Davey and I. Johnny Hugh, I. Carboni, I. Day, I. I know that was really choppy, but thank you. I think, um, Tracy, I'll just connect with you to make sure that my notes are match your notes on that. So, thank you. All right, next, um, member Donahue had requested um, this agenda item. And I, if you wouldn't mind, if you could walk us through what your, your thought process was. Sure. Um, so I think a lot of the issue or part of the issue that we're having in town in a couple different ways is trying to find a cohesive way to move forward. And I think it's because everybody kind of has this personalized opinion of what it means to be rural. So I think it would be beneficial for all the related boards and committees and whatever, anybody really who wants to come, to come. And maybe we could do it at um, Loon Pond Lodge. The, I don't think the library would be big enough. But essentially, we would come together, we would establish what it means to be rural Lakeville. You know, we're having trouble with development. We're having trouble with um, growing the town in a way that's a, you know appealing to everybody. So if we go and we sit and we say, okay, here's what we want to do, here's what we want to see, here's what we don't, then we can start establishing things like, okay, we need this in the zoning bylaws, we need this um, in terms of planning. When it comes to housing, here's what we'd like. When it comes to the industrial park, like we talked about, you know, we may need to expand it or adjust it a bit, and that will require X, Y, and Z. So it just kind of, I thought it would get everybody kind of on the same page, because it seems like it's been a bit disjointed. And... Um, yeah, I guess I was just looking for feedback and what boards or committees you think would um, would would should be there. Um, I think most should be there, um, but that was the thought mm. that getting everybody together to basically answer the question: What does rural mean when it comes to Lakeville? Because if we establish that baseline answer, then we can start moving forward with developments and what way we want the town to go in terms of being more industrial, more commercial, more residential, uh, ecotourism, a blend of several or all of them, um, and how it would bring us forward. The first thing that comes to mind is master plan, um, because I know that a lot of work went into that and uh, you know, ruralness, the character, you know, has been the common theme throughout that. Um, I would certainly, I know that at some point, the master plan implementation committee is going to be knocking on our door um, to come in front of this board to talk about what our um, action items were uh, to try to meet that. So that was my first thought that um, I know there's a lot of work and stuff that have gone into that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah. it yeah, would like definitely the, need to be, you know, included, I would think. Yeah, I like the idea. I agree. The very first thing that came to mind was master plan, because um, every 10 years, right, yeah. the residents are given that opportunity to have endless workshops and such where yeah. they help define those things and they go and do the, you know, the, the whiteboard exercises. Um, I, I think, you know, we should maybe just extend an invite to MPIC and say, come on in, um, just in case they're waiting for us. 
I know there's a little bit of frustration on that board because they really don't have any power to implement anything, even though they're right. called the implementation committee. Right. Um, so it would be nice to hear from them, like, you know, does the plan as they currently see it still align with the things that we're hearing from residents okay. today or not? And I forget how many years in advance they start that process. I feel like it's at least a couple because the current one's 2030, it takes a long, it? it takes a very long time. I want to say, I want to say within the eight, nine year before, no. because it's 27, I think is, is it? Is it 2030? I thought it was like Lakeville is it 2030 is the current one. Right. Okay. Well, no, I think you're absolutely right, Brian. I mean, there is a huge, yeah. I'll even say disagreement on what it means to keep rural character, mm -hmm. depending on who you talk to. And um, you gotta find a way forward one way or another. Yeah. So, um, in terms of scheduling that, I think we would be looking at October or November. That would give everybody about three or four months notice to, I don't know, three, yeah, I think three or four months notice. Um, so that any of the members who wanted to come could come. Um, if they couldn't show up, they could maybe write something. Um, if only one member of the board or committee wants to come, basically just, you know, it's open, come on down. And master plan implementation committee is great. They should come. Um, they could do a presentation if they wanted on what they've gotten from the workshops. But I think the workshops have been pretty consistent and it's just the rest of it that's not matching up. I don't think, but like you said, they really don't have any power. And they said that when I visited them a couple of years ago when all of that was going on. Um, so I think the goal of this would be to more get everything else in town to align with the master plan implementation committee because like you said, they've answered those questions and they have it all there. Um, it's just kind of, that's well, nice. And then we move <laughs> forward with what we move forward with. So I think if we kind of come together, it might be better. All right. So I will. Um, I'll invite MPIC um, to one of our one of our next meetings based on you know the I guess the heaviness of the agenda, the lift of it, okay. um, and then you know uh, I think it's great. I, I always open to having you know people congregate and talk about good things. So it would have to be facilitated. Obviously, is that something that you would? Sure. All right, and we can follow up on that, Brenna, you know, so that we can see what it looks like after. Sounds good. Thank you. Um, thank you for bringing that up. Did anybody have any questions for Brenna? Good. Good. You know, I, I, the only thing is I just think the master plan should just get a specific invite that's all because they have done so much work for years okay. and we just can't forget that they've had lots of folks who have turned out continually they may not be the loudest in the crowd right now but um, it's kind of hard to balance who's louder I guess <laughs> so <laughs> you know I mean Lots of folks turned out for many years to say development should go on in North Lakeville and you know now we have 400 units of housing so you know it's um, but anyways okay. building committee updates senior center food pantry edition thank you madam chair we are in the design phase okay and usually that takes What's that? how long do you think this will take uh, well it's funded through opera uh, we are in the process of uh, we have a designer on board we we're talking to pomeroy associates about being project manager because mm -hmm. uh, yep. we just don't have the capacity uh, staff wise to do it so we're okay. moving forward sweet hopefully it'll be done by the end of the year awesome Fire Station Building Committee, we have a meeting on Wednesday. I always seem to have a meeting right after our select board meeting. So um, we did meet and um, prepared the fact that we are gonna have to bring in, um, you know, some of the uh, specialists within the architectural um, firm 
for some to address some of the, the next items that are coming up so that we can work on design uh, this Wednesday uh, we'll be talking about forming a design working group on design because I know we still have to flush out a lot of um, you know ways that we can make it more efficient you know maybe cost saving measures you know, so anyway that's where we are but I will keep you all in the loop but really there hasn't been much to report out other than that so old colony Brian uh, not a lot of updates so they had their last meeting on July 8th the same um, night as we did that I wasn't here for and they've done another um, day with like the staff and such there just to get more input on like you know, if you could start fresh how would you do old colony all over again one of the things that did come out of it was um, at the previous meeting I, I apologize I don't remember if I already told you or not one of the first questions was so do we want to you know only talk about keeping it in Rochester does anybody want to like adopt a school and move it to one of their towns and everybody's like nope Rochester can keep it um, because if we stay on the same parcel whether it's renovation or full rebuild then that money um, the M MSBA will allow demo to be part of the you know covered cost so everybody's like no 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 <laughs> that's because if we don't do that if, it, if they do go for a full rebuild and say they built in Lakeville you'd end up with that whole facility sitting there and somebody would have to take care of it or pay the demo it or whatever so the agency um, brought back a few, I'll forward the presentation here. Um, what they're suggesting is if it was a full rebuild, um, Old Colony right now is a single story. And they said that they would go two story and that actually would shrink the footprint of the building and it gives them more places on that parcel to actually potentially put it. And they get even more places to potentially put it if they get rid of their well um, and go with uh, middle bar water. So they're trying to figure out um, how can they work with this middle bar water and the gas line that runs down? I think it's like North Ave or North Street. Because um, if they can bring the water line along the uh, existing easement for the gas line, it drops the cost to like 25% of what it would be mm -hmm. if they had to trench the whole way and you know create their own new nice. water line. So, um, but they're perfectly happy with the parcel. This is all kinds of options, no matter what they decide to do. So more to come. Excellent. Oh. Are we definitely going with a new build? No, that, that won't even be, I don't even want to use the word decided. It won't even be recommended uh, until probably September or October. Okay. Uh, and that's when the company will bring back and say, all right, we've looked at everything. Here's a renovation option. Here's what, we, here's what they would consider their preferred renovation option, their preferred addition option, and their preferred reconstruction option. And then the building committee has to discuss those and weigh the pros and cons send a recommendation up to MSBA and then see what they come back with. Okay. Town administrative search. So, um, we met last Thursday. Um, we were originally told we were going to look at eight resumes, but out of the eight only seven supplied the essay questions. So we only had seven. Out of the seven, it was pretty unanimous that we only wanted to interview possibly two. Really? Wow. So um, we have a select board policy that says we will bring two forward to the select board. Yep. Any search committee will bring two candidates forward. So um, we were faced with a dilemma. So we are meeting again on this Thursday to discuss MRI was going to try to do some direct recruiting and then we're going to see where that may get us. But we, we were, most of us were only looking to interview <laughs> two people. So that's, now is it because the pool is so shallow right now? Because I understood that, um, you know, there was going to be a little bit more interest, I guess, with, with 
because for years that pool has been shallow um, and that more and more people were going to get their MPA, which is their master's in public administration. So, so according to MRI, um, so it was executive session, so I'm trying to just be oh, sure. a little careful. Um, but they did explain to us that in general, the pool is actually very shallow. The pool is, I mean, it's a high demand job. It's 24 seven, right, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, um, the state has, you know, pretty, um, pretty attractive positions for some folks with the same qualifications and they have a, you know, eight to five position. Um, they, MRI doesn't think it's because of our salary range. They think that we're ranged pretty, you know, pretty well. Um, but there's a lot of folks who, even if they're in their position, they said, they just don't want to move for an extra $10,000. They're very comfortable where they are. So the way we left it was that MRI was going to see what they could do as far as direct recruiting. And we're going to regroup on Thursday because we didn't want to let it go. Sure. Um, and also we don't want to interview any candidates waiting for more candidates and then now we're like two or three or four weeks between right. interviews right. so yeah. um makes yeah. sense yeah so so stay tuned so yeah stay tuned which you know um of course we'll know more after thursday but um i just have to caution the board again that we only have bob until october so we may have to get creative um, if we don't have someone in place. And um, we can discuss what that means at a later date. We're not sure. really posted to talk about that, but. Yep. We'll take turns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Careful what you yeah. volunteer right. for. Um, um, yes. Question if I may. Um, I'm a little concerned over this direct recruiting idea because that was a posted position with a deadline. What does that mean? Because uh, yeah. that that starts to make me nervous. Because if um, there's other people that were considering it, but saw, oh, it's already two days late. Yeah, so it's, it's handled, um, according to MRI, it's handled in a different way. And it's folks that they have already know, they know, um, they will call them and see if they can generate any more interest for us. Um, and honestly, we're gonna have to see, and we had a very long discussion about that, that specific thing. Um, so we'll have to see what happens on Thursday. Um, can, can we ask the HR director if she'd be willing to answer a couple questions? I think that might be relevant. If, she, if she'd be willing. <laughs> yes, I'd like to invite the uh, <laughs> HR director to the table. Hi. You know better than to show up at a meeting. <laughs> I just came for the fun. You know. Okay. May yes. I? You have a question? Yes, I, I did. I yes, did, I did I'm good. No, you had the question. Um, okay. Concern level with this idea? Would you rather repost? Or is the, yeah, if we have good candidates, you don't want to let them string along at the risk of losing your best candidate to go and find more candidates. What, I mean, what do we do here? I, I was, think I was trying to stay. I, I was going to say, I think you're putting um, the human resource director in a difficult situation because we talked about it as a group. And I think all of us decided we would wait and see what would happen on Thursday and then discuss what our next, I think you're asking her to jump the gun right now. Well, I'm looking to her as also our enforcer of HR policy. So if there's anything wrong here with job postings, I'm a little concerned. Um, why, I'm sorry, I'm a bit lost. Why are we looking to direct hire, which is causing the concern? Because we don't really have enough candidates to actually interview. So we either try something different or we scrap the search and start all over again. Would it be out of line to say, because you guys said that you, or I'm sorry, you said that you found two that you thought were suitable. Would it be out of line to suggest you take three from the other four or two from the other four and revisit them 
So we did do that in the meeting. Um, we were down to two, and because we have this policy, and what often happens, it's not seldom, it's often candidates will drop out. Okay. So that's why we need at least to interview three okay. um, in case one drops out. But um, we did ask them what candidates, so we had one through eight, they picked eight, and we did ask them what 9, 10, 11, and 12 look like. And um, they said that they just didn't feel they would bring them forward for us. Um, so it's a little bit of a difficult situation. Um, so we will see what happens on Thursday. Um, and then we may decide to interview and, you know, to add an additional one, or, you know, we may decide to go out again. Right, because the recommendation, <clears throat> um, you know, through the charge was to make a recommendation to the main body here, which is the select board. And if that, through their deliberations, decide that their recommendation is to go back out, that will come from that subcommittee or the recommendation would be um, to interview XYZ but I also had the same thought as you were speaking about the recruiting techniques based on the fact that it was posted um, so to deviate from that I will say that we did ask that the candidates that were brought forward be totally we be totally transparent with them and so that way they know that that why the delay exists but um i don't know lacy if you want to answer i'm not telling you not to answer but um you know i just feel like we this was the search committee's recommendation so so the search committee's recommendation is to to let them do the a direct yeah and see okay yep because they do have people that you know they may not have applied and I mean I don't think that's illegal or immoral or you know whatever it's just different okay I think it's an entire change of process and okay. I should come back to us if that's the case. We will express that to the search Is there company a vote and the committee. On, uh, on authorizing them to do that. Did we take a vote? I don't think. I don't think we took a vote. No. 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 <coughs> okay. So right. Thursday. Um, it's, at, it's next Thursday. Next Thursday. Sorry, the first. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I would please take the um, request. I mean, I'm, I'm, do, is there consensus from this board that um, that concern? Yep. We will explain that concern. So with that, I will call them tomorrow and talk to them and see what they say and. Um, Buzz didn't send you anything, right? Yeah, I didn't get anything from him either. I'm just concerned that there be like the, the way the, the subcommittee wouldn't be able to entertain the redirect of process. Madam Chair, yes. you know, I think you need to let the process play out. Okay. Because this is folks watching, yes. candidates watching. Understood. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Okay. All right, um, new business, um, anybody? I have new business. Um, okay. I want to draft a letter regarding what's going on um, with all the property assessments. And um, I would obviously run that by everybody before sending that. Um, if you wanted to put your name on it, you could. Um, I didn't know if we wanted to have residents sign it who are currently affected by this, just to demonstrate you know, this is a big deal. And then maybe, depending on scheduling, invite 
forgive me. The representatives are um, Oral, Rodriguez, and Akinclos. Is mm -hmm. that the three that Rodrickson, cover? Rodriguez and yeah. yeah. no, Akinclos is a congressman. Yeah. Um, you wouldn't have the congressman involved. I'm sorry? You would just have the rep in the state senate. You wouldn't have the congressman mm -hmm. involved. OK. Yeah. Um, so it would be sent to them. Um, and they could, you know, they could be invited to the meeting with the assessors. Um, but that's really my only new business is that I want to draft a letter. Um, to who? To them. To representatives. To the representatives, oral basically. And you, know, you know, expressing the issue. Because I, I don't think, I really have a very negative view on this. I don't see it as just a, a potential accounting error or. Um, you know, just a, a, a matter of the times. I think it's a lot of different things that are building up, um, and I want to express that um, because some of the, like I said at that meeting, the, the whole plan to make affordable housing is making it unaffordable to be where they're building the affordable housing. So um, I don't know how much I can go into this because it's a new business, um, but the way that some of the developments are going on with their affordable housing over, assessments are done every five years, correct? So the way that it's been happening is all of these really expensive homes are being bought and sold, and that's increasing evaluations all around town without the 40B component to offset it. So for the past five years, all those expensive homes selling factored into the assessment, which we're now dealt with. And that was done in the name of affordable housing, but it's making housing unaffordable. Does that make sense? Somewhat. I think I know what you're saying, and I did see what you had said at the meeting. Um, but even though homes may only be inspected once every X number of years or whatever, they're still subject to the same trends. Um, yeah. I would also like to, you know, say that, um, you know, folks say, well, we don't get services, we don't have street lights, we don't. Well, the way we all look at services is, I don't have kids in the school system anymore. I'm still paying for the taxes. Schools. I don't yeah. have street lights either. So you can't, you can't necessarily say, I don't have a street light, I don't have this, so therefore I should pay less. Mm. It's a group bill and we all pay our portion, basically, whether we have a street light or mm -hmm. you know, some folks pay for their own street light in Lakeville actually. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's kind of hard to use the, um, the services part of the explanation. I know, you know, we consider it, but still, I didn't yeah. get a discount just because my second son graduated from high school and, no. you know, I don't have kids going to school anymore. So that's just kind of one point about the whole services thing. Mm -hmm. The other thing with the assessors is it's not that subjective. Um, it really is a lot of math mm -hmm. and this doesn't happen all the time because we don't have these types of sales all the time and i i know what you're saying with the 40b component but the 40b component should be adding units to our town mm -hmm. and i know what you're saying is they're <laughs> increasing the base level but we're not adding enough on the affordable so we're not getting the affordable overall the tax the tax is getting bigger because we're adding all this new growth, whatever. But it, that's the thing, it's very complicated. Um, now, do I have, Bob? No, go ahead, finish. No. no, do I have questions as to, so I know that I had spoken to Bob and we said something like, I thought the last, the, um, the initial tax bills were the average of the last four quarters. So has it always been done that, you know, they put the new valuations in there, which raised the bill higher than what we haven't determined the tax bill yet? So those are the questions that I'm asking the assessors. So that's why I think it's a great idea if we bring the assessors in to talk about the tax bill. But I know where you're going with the 40B but I don't know that we can get there. I don't know if the math actually supports the, the, um, the hypothesis. Do you think it would be better to meet with the assessors and then draft the letter? 
Maybe. Okay. Maybe yeah. That. I yep. don't have a problem with 40B, but I do have a problem with, and I said this before, right. they, they destroy all of our bylaws, they take away power completely from the zoning board in the name of affordable housing, Right. but they make it unaffordable for the people who have lived here for how many years? Um, and that's kind of the point where it's, you know, the hospital closed down, our economic went to put, and now we rely heavily on the state for a lot of things. And it's like, how are you... How are you justifying this? Right. How are right. you adjusting it to the times of right? Yes. Yeah. Um, so it's so more it's more of a question about the forty B program versus and, necessarily. Yeah. And also an explanation. I don't think it's working. Um, I feel like they're evaluating land based on money they could get for it, as opposed to what it's actually valued at. Madam Chair, if I may, uh, if you're going to write a letter to the senator and the representative. It would only be, I mean, they only would be involved in regarding legislation, chap, you know, 40B and Proposition 2.5. But as far as the local assessments, it has nothing to do with the state legislative delegation. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Okay. All right. So we'll just I'll, keep that on the back burner yeah, for you. I'll wait okay. until after the assessor's meeting yeah. that we have. Anybody else new business? Good. Okay, old business, um, ARPA, you gave us an update thank you. here. Yes, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. You do have an update um, that I provided both Plymouth County and direct funding from the federal government. I will go over um, the projects that are in process. Uh, in regards to the old town hall restroom septic uh, system bid, uh, two bids were received. The bid opening date was last week. Uh, we had two bids and the amount of 27950 27, and 37100 uh, So the low bid was award, will be awarded to Caniff Company. The Clear Pond Park, uh, we, uh, in the, uh, the project uh, to provide water to the uh, Clear, Pond, Clear Pond Park, uh, we have estimated a cost of $454,930. We are waiting approval from the county. Environmental Partners is ready to go as soon as they receive the approval. Um, the old town, hall, old town Hall restroom project is in the design phase. Hopefully it will go out to bid in August. The pavilion sound system is on hold, obviously, until the pavilion project is completed. The food pantry addition uh, is in the design phase. We are estimating $200,000. The town hall roof project came in at $5,984. It is in process and work will start this week. The UTV transport trailer uh, is $9,800. That has been delivered. Uh, the fill station is in process in the amount of $81,794. Uh, the Ted Williams Camp Lane project and the mobile snack shack uh, projects, uh, the purchase of the snack shack is still on hold pending uh, what the final costs are for many of these projects. As I mentioned at the last meeting, the skate park renovation is an eligible, the skate, skate park project in renovation is ineligible, and the voting tabulators of $40,600 is in process, and I understand it will be delivered tomorrow. So we have a balance somewhere around $225,000 uh, based on the county allotment and what we are projecting to spend. You know, a lot of that, obviously, the big big amount, the big project here is the Clear Pond Park project. Um, so, you know, until that goes out to bid, um, you know, we don't know what that exact balance will be. But again, we're still waiting for the county for their approval. Uh, moving on to the direct funding from the federal government. Uh, the pavilion project went out to bid. Bids were open last week. We received one bid in the amount of $69,000. So that would uh, mean that APA would fund 39000 of that uh, project. Uh, the Cultural Council will provide $20,000 and $10,000 from the Library Building Fund, which leaves a balance of $39,000 from APA. The Irrigation System Police and Irrigation System Library, where that is in process. Uh, Engineering at Clear Pond Park, we are waiting. I need to talk to environmental partners on that project. I didn't want to talk to them until we got the go ahead on the uh, water project. 
the Ted Williams Camp parking lot resurfacing project. We are in the process of securing costs in design and um, setting up perk tests and working on the draining as well. So that project is moving forward. We should have an exact cost of that project shortly. And the South Worth Lennon Street project is completed and that came in at $202,561. As far as the projection in our allotment, I am meeting with the town accountant tomorrow, and I will have exact numbers at our next meeting, if there's a shortfall or not. So that is an update, and as I said, this is a work in progress, and we'll have another update at our next meeting. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you. Brian, Leo, anything? No, I'm happy to see some bids come in lower than we expected. Yeah, me too. That helps. Okay, um, moving on, based on our conversation that we had at the last meeting about um, our goals and um, town council um, recommendation or guidance. And I know Leah, you had um, some concerns with that as I think the rest of us did too. So um, I'm bringing to you uh, it, this evening a I guess a request recommendation um, to form very small sub working subcommittees to get some of these um, goal items that we have established um, going. There's no charge here. There's no makeup. If we vote to establish these working groups, um, those representatives from the select board can work with the town administrator to put together a brief charge. I don't think it has to be anything elaborate um, and make up. It just has to be like three people. But I just wanted to bring it here. We can push this off for discussion for another meeting. Um, but I wanted to put it in front of you this evening. Uh, quick so question, Madam Chair. Was, I might have missed it the last meeting, so I apologize. What was the guidance from town council? That the fact that um, that you couldn't have two members of the board working together on like the policies together. Really? Yes. It'd be more of a, a violation. Not. Open Even though it's not a quorum, it's not I was a say, it was quorum. Like, well, one of the reasons we went to five members, so we could do some of these things. And that was my, <laughs> right. my that assertion was, was that Maureen and I would not be like, you know, um, saying, okay, this is how we should change this. What Maureen and I would be doing would be, you know, saying, okay, this policy was created at this time. We feel like it's used a lot of the time, not mm -hmm. a lot of the time you know, rank things in like a priority, but it was never my intention to tell the board what they should do to change it, but to just identify that it right. should be looked at either, you know, like we always, like I always say, the uh, the political signs not on town property. Like to me, that's an important <laughs> one that we have all addressed as chair, basically. Um, yes, HR. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, to that's me. I think it was either explained uh, poorly or I don't know. So, Mass General Law states that if you form a subcommittee, that if it has any type of dealings where it would concern like the residents or a larger group, it has to be an open meeting. So, it wasn't a matter of it being the two select board members. It was the matter of the policies govern things that have to do with our residents in our town. Mm -hmm. So if you create that subcommittee, you have to then hold an open an open meeting. And the reason I know it is because when we were going through section 21 to 23 and we formed the PEC, the only reason that I didn't have to have it on Lake Cam was because it only concerned the employees and not the residents. If it, it's policies, and we're talking about policies of the select board and it has dealings with the residents, you can't have a subcommittee that's in a closed session or outside of the public. That's actually what it is. So it almost becomes, you have to go subcommittee by subcommittee and figure out what is their 
what are they dealing with? Right. So if it concerns any of the resident population that it would affect them, then it has to be in an open session. So what the attorney was essentially saying is, you know, Leah could take so many policies and, and work on them on her own, because now it's not a committee, it's just a select board member, right? So she could go to like the town administrator, she could come to me, and then Maureen could take a pile of them and go to the town administrator. And then it's not a, a committee, it's just a person working on policies. But the moment that they come together and they join what's considered a committee or a subcommittee, mm. you then are open to open meeting laws. Yeah, she's not, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Post, meet in a room. Well, and that was my thing. My thing was, I don't care if I tell yeah. them I'm working on a couple of policies <laughs> because I'm, you know, where we just are doing the legwork on trying to prep these to get them into everyone's inbox. You know, it's not like, you know, Maureen Thank and I you. are going to say, no, this is the way this should be. Yes. <laughs> right. It, you know. But it would, but that would be um <laughs> that is what you could be saying <laughs> well we're just saying we're we're organizing and ordering and you Perception. know like yeah. whatever but i don't care i can post a meeting and maureen and i can sit here and talk about these things <laughs> right. but then you know it's not any cons it's not really any meeting at that point because that's that's my point we are breaking open meeting law doing it this way but yet if we post a meeting we're just two people having a meeting right. so why aren't we just two people having a meeting having a meeting it's the same yeah so anyways that's why i wanted to get past this and try to figure something out to move all of this forward i know we talked about an information technology subcommittee um again no charge, no makeup. I just wanted to get this out there. So, um, Brenna, you talked about communication and community outreach. Um, that I know had the website. It had some other, you know, outreach things. Again, maybe that's you know two people from <clears throat> this board and maybe two members at large. I don't know. Can I start a TikTok? <laughs> <laughs> And then the Lakeville Citizens Academy. Um, There's a whole policy. Yeah, right. Social media. Yeah. There's a, we have a social media. We talked to the policy subcommittee first. Yeah. So, anyways, I know if you're interested in entertaining this, we can vote to establish these and work with the town administrator because I think we're all, each one of us is assigned to one of these. I think it was um, policy was Maureen and Leah. Information, I know it was Brian, you're standalone. Communication and community outreach, um, I think was Brenna and myself. And then the Lakeville Citizens Academy, I think that was myself and Maureen. So, I don't, I just wanted to make sure that I get this out here. I'm not making any decisions on yeah, this. Yeah, no, so. I mean, I'm happy to, I don't know if we need to vote on it yet, because I, I, you know, if I'm gonna do the IT thing, I'd prefer to create a charge and show it to you first. Okay, then that's why um, it's here. Good. That's, I'm happy to do that. All right. Madam Chair, yes. who was on communication and community outreach? Brenna and myself. Brenna was primary, I was secondary. So why don't we do that? Why don't we come up with like an idea of what our subcommittee would do and bring it back and talk about it next time. Fine. Action item, next agenda. You got it. You good with that, Leah? Um, as good as good could be with it? Uh, yeah, I'm still protesting because yep. <laughs> you can't have it both ways. You can't be a committee and then not a committee. I'm happy to do them all in open meeting. I mean, that's fine. Uh, right, People me too. People come and make but... suggestions. Yeah, so that's the only hiccup. Fine, post them. Right. And why don't we, um, we'll add land use to that because I know you're working on that too. Yep. Okay, uh, we also need to ratify the vote that we took on July 8th um, regarding the approval of vacation time overage for uh, Laurie Fahey. Um, so the board voted at the last meeting to approve the vacation time overage of 16 hours. However, the request was not in the packet. So this is a re, we voted it. It's just, this is a um, ratify, we're ratifying the vote. So I'll entertain a motion for Brian's 
Um, did you watch it all last meeting? No. Um, no I have four hours we, and 45 minutes. No, I didn't. Oh, yeah. look, can we not go there? <laughs> we, oh, um, my goodness. Mm -hmm. We added Lori in because we did the other one, so uh, yeah. we just figured we would not hold her up. So I'll entertain a motion to ratify the vote that we took on July 8th. So moved. moved. Second. Discussion? Roll. Baby and I. Donahue, aye. Carboni, aye. Dave Stan. Okay. A quick question on that whole topic, if I may, since yes. we're here. Are we going to look? From what I do understand, there was a significant amount of time rolled over for animal control. Are we going to increase the callback budget there? I think there's a position, if that's I'm not, not mistaken. Filled. Isn't there one that's not filled? Not filled. Because we're already hearing the callback budget might be low in the first place. So if we're rolling over another 80 hours of vacay. We need to consider the operational impacts as well. Well, let's put it on the next agenda. Make a note, Tracy. Okay. All right. Um, can you come back up, please? <laughs> <laughs> So we have, um, we voted the other evening to extend, um, or no, reappoint um, interim town administrator Bob Noons through October 15th, 2024. Our HR director um, took a look at the, because we wanted everything to be the same in the contract, but there was some differences because 180 days it's not 180 days and I'm going to turn this over to you to finish right so 180 days from I believe it was January 19th is actually June 17th the board had voted on June 20th which leaves July 17th I'm sorry July 17th which leaves a three-day gap so this just changes it to say that He's being reappointed on July 17th, so there's no break in between the 180 days. It'll be till October 15th, which the board had already voted on. The rest of the contract stays exactly the same. So we basically needed to vote on that change. Um, I'll make the motion to correct the start date from July 20th, 2024 to July 17th, 2024. Second. Discussion? No, no, no sorry, no. July 17th, 2024 to October 15th, 2024. Oh, yes, okay. um, with an end date of October 15th, 2024. Yes. Okay, second. Discussion? I need to get this straight. July 17th, 2024 to October 15th, 2024. Thank you. Roll, please. Baby and I. Donahue, I. Carboni, I. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome back. Yep, welcome. Um, For the third. <laughs> <laughs> third time's a charm. That's it. Okay. Discuss and possible vote to approve the job description for veteran services officer and determine the number of hours. So you provided the attached um, draft job description here in front of us. And would you please take a moment to speak to this? Sure, so all I did was um, update the existing one that we had, including the mass general laws, which stipulate that they must be honorably discharged, have their DD-214, and then be certified from the state and pass that test within six months of hire. So those are the uh, qualifications. And then I went through, again, the, the mass general law to see what their job description was and just kind of took <coughs> and added it into anything that wasn't already in our job description. Okay. So we just need to vote to approve the Well, job. it's a little bit more than that. 
So we currently were, we had our part-time person, right? So they were under 19 hours on the wage scale. They fit into the wage scale based off of being part-time. So it's kind of twofold. We did reach out to surrounding towns. So state law again says that you, in order to have a regional uh, asset, they have to be an adjoining town. So Middleborough basically is right next door to us um, and, and they already you know, have their own built in there, they're good. We did speak with Carver and Carver, even though it doesn't adjoin us, uh, we thought about maybe that. They actually are in the process of hiring somebody full-time, 32 hours. They are happy with just being on their own. So that was kind of uh, not really feasible. Like I said last time, uh, Marion, Mattapoise, and Rochester are already a uh, consortium. So they're not looking to grow. And as you grow, you actually have to continue to add more people on. So depending on the population determines how many people have to be there. And then our other bordering towns are Bristol County. So it would split the Bristol and Plymouth, which then becomes problematic. Speaking to Will, um, you know, he said that you, you could put somebody in there 36 hours and they would have to work. And I, I tend to believe that because I think Will did a very good job in his 15 hours taking care of the problems that the veterans were having, but I don't think that he was doing any kind of real outreach to like really promote anything. So this person would have that ability to promote things that are coming in and say the benefits that are out there and, you know, send out the letters and, and do that type of thing. So it gives them that ability. Um, so I would say anywhere between like 32 and 36 hours is, is what that would be my proposal. Um, I would recommend that they're non-union because they're they're considered a department head. They, they're not really working under any one person. They're not working for any other director, which makes them you know their own kind of department head. And then, based off of that, we you you have the two pay scales. You have the hourly and the salary. I would more go for the the salary and do like I said, like that thirty-two to thirty-six hour. Um, Right now in our salary one, we have A, B, C, D, E, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and we have nobody in A, B, D, or E. Um, Tracy's actually the lone wolf on the, on the non-union salary scale. So at Salary D, it's fifty thousand two hundred and fifty-one dollars for thirty-six hours. It's it's approximately twenty-eight dollars an hour. <coughs> so, I would ask when these recommendations are coming to the board to actually have the recommendation in writing, um, because that would have given me an opportunity to really like understand a little bit more where you were coming from because right now I'm like okay you just threw a lot at me I don't know how the other, the rest of the board feels but um, that would just be helpful because I went through this veteran agent and I was prepared to talk about this and the hours so um, just saying I would yeah so once we spoke to cover I reached back out to it's been it's been a process on my end too and I'm you know I'm trying to learn exactly what we need to do so after we spoke with Carver then was reaching back to them to see you know if there was other ways that we could do it knowing that Will had also left another town reached out mm -hmm. to them but because they're so far away that it, it wouldn't matter anyway so it was it's been a learning curve for me and then coming in today, I went, oh, we're looking at like hours and rates, but our rates have to fit into what we already have. Okay. So, so I do apologize. It was kind of, my brain didn't work as fast to catch up with, oh wait, we also have to look at, you know, and secondary yeah. and okay. tertiary effects to it. Um, so, I mean, and I understand that's a lot to digest. It, it, if it's something that needs to be put on the next one, at, knowing that, you know, he does leave on the second. Right. So we've already put in the, uh, Lori was working on the newsletter for the senior center. 
she's you know put that his last day is the second if they have like an immediate concern or they need something right 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 away they have my phone number so there's not going to be a loss of continuity um but this is this is the information i've now found out for the board up until this point where i think knowing that we can go for the next meeting and, and have that like definitive decision on what we want to post mr Jones, what would you recommend i'd recommend that we move forward uh, with posting the position as recommended by Lacey. Where do we fund it from? That's the next question. Uh, well, we'll have to adjust the budget at town meeting, fall town meeting. So, uh, if I may, the, um, if we don't know the number off the top of your head, I mean, what was the line item roughly today? Like, what's the delta to go into full time, I guess? I heard you say 50 ish at the rate you mentioned. It's probably another 30,000. We're here still. Yeah, I think that mm -hmm. his was at 22 yeah. or 23, yeah. and this is 50. Yeah. So okay. probably another 30,000. All right. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm, Madam Chair, I'm personally happy to go full time on this and get somebody in. Uh, I think, in addition to what you mentioned, upon being able to do more outreach, I think having somebody who is going to be our person and creating relationships with these people where relationships really matter mm -hmm. is going to be big for us. So I'd like to know that you know they can pick up the phone and talk to our person, no matter what. I'm sure Will took a call all times of day, anyways. But I think this gives me some more comfort knowing that the veterans will have dedicated full-time support. All right. So as far as the hours are concerned, we want to say 32, 36, no more than 36, 36. Only once. Because you said between 30, 32 and 36. So usually when it's one of uh, the salaried employees, we write right into their job description that they will work no less than this many hours. Uh, okay. So we can say no less than 36. Okay. And that's still considered non-union, part-time, no So that's non-union, full-time. Full-time, full -time. Full -time. Okay. right. So we'll have to adjust the working conditions then, because that still says 18 hours. Mm. I hadn't put full time on it. I, it. When I sent it in for the agenda item, I hadn't gotten 100% of the information that I needed. So I was just trying to get the actual job description for you to be able to review. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know which way we were going to go on it. So um, so I will put the, the 36. The way that it's written in the other ones, like I said, it says no less than because it's a salaried employee and not I think that one is for an hourly rate because at the bottom it says this position is yeah, exempt. A rate in yeah, so we'll mm -hmm. now say non-exempt because it's going to be a non-exempt. And then, um, so the step D is the uh, 50, I'm sorry, E, $50,295. Say it again, 50 what? $50,295. Step E. E. Or level E. Is that what it currently is, or you're recommending we vote on it? Recommending, true. Okay. And that's a fair salary? Yes. Yes. It's comparable to the other surrounding towns. Okay. All right. So um, we can vote on it tonight. We can vote on it at the next meeting. Um, but if we're going to do it tonight, um, we have to include uh, that we're approving the job description with the following changes. Um, if it's a non-union full-time um, minimum 36-hour position, and the salary would be um, within our wage and personnel scale of step E, which is $50,295. 50295? 50295. Okay. Thanks. Ma'am Chair, what was the, you had non-union position? Full-time. Full-time. Third, uh, no less, uh, 36 hours. Those would be the updates in, in, the, in this posting, right? Well, the, the posting would be the hours. Yes. 36 then, hours and then. Yep. Okay. And it would be step E on our page, wage and personnel skill. So moved. 
Second. Motion and a second. Discussion. Who's looking at Lacey? <laughs> <laughs> Is that okay? Did we do it, do, did we do it okay? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay. I do appreciate this. Okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none, roll please. Baby and I. Tony, aye. Carboni, aye. Aye, aye. Thank you for working what? through this. Ryan made Ryan the motion. motion. I second the deal. All right. Let's get one other piece of old business, if you don't mind, ma'am. Uh, um, I don't even know where my agenda is at this moment, so right. I don't even know where we are. Well, we're still old business, right? Oh, okay. Here this we goes go. back a bit. Um, back in February, we had asked about getting those rights to farm signs. I have an update. Oh, really? I have an update, and I was actually going to put this on old business, but I have an update. All right. So, um, speaking with Christina, Christina reached out to the members of the open space. So, Devaney mm -hmm. um, kind of took this on with Joan, um, who are members, and... Right now, they have looked at um, the actual sign itself because they reached out to our the company that we kind of get our signs from, and they gave us some gave them some samples, and then from there, they're estimating that they need about thirty of these signs, so they're going to get a price on that, and they're working on locations, okay. and I believe they've reached out to. Um, Superintendent of Streets, or is a DPW director? He beats me up every time because I can never remember. Um, I believe they've reached out um, about assisting putting those on, putting the signs up. We do run into the caveat that uh, some of the roads are state owned, so there would have to be a permit um, for, with Mass DOT to put up a sign. So right now they're looking at all the uh, main roads coming into Lakeville where it says entering Lakeville. Uh, they're looking at putting the signs near where the actual farming community is. So if there are tractors that drive up the roads or you know, in those particular areas. Yes. So all of this is getting put together um, to come to front of this board for um, approval. Great. Do so yeah, they've, they've really just... Good. Do you know if that 30 includes any spares or is that just that i don't know so they when they will put the list of locations together i think that um you know i will i will certainly ask them okay. because they've so been, it's 30 signs 30 signs about this I don't big think i've seen that many in other communities no usually it's when you come yeah, in it's just like and you're lucky if you catch it kind of thing <laughs> right. right yeah we get big blinking ones like <laughs> yeah animated tractors People love it. <laughs> so I think what they'll do is they'll bring it back because um, they're, you know, they had reached out to their committees to have them, you know, select which one. But I think that they're going with the one that just would be the town, you know, it would just say Lakeville, the tractor, right to farm community. Simple but stated. Yeah. So, yes. Cool. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. I almost forgot. Glad you said um, something. As long as I know, as, as we're talking about right to farm, do we know if any of our right to farm folks have been able to get grants or have been successful since we became a right to farm community? I'm just curious. I Anyone don't know. can reach out. I don't know. I I'll reach out. Know. I just. Who do Farm received the grant from the state to grow the tomatoes and the greenhouses. So they got grants for the farm stand, the hot houses, and I think maybe the solar infrastructure. They just put in is it Rochester? Or Rochester. Yeah. So they've, they've gotten a bunch, but I don't know about others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious about others. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll get the names from the people from you, Tracy, and I'll find out. Yeah. I'm just curious because. A few people spoke pretty passionately at yeah. town meeting about it, so yeah. I'm hoping that it's enabled them to, yeah. you know, tap into some of those resources. That's great. So thank you, Brian. Anybody else? Old business? Okay. All right. Wow. Next select board meeting, everybody.
Calendars out. August 12th, 5.30, here at the police station. Anyway, I don't have any correspondence. Um, Are we also on the 26th? I don't have it in my calendar. Yet. I have my calendar here. 26th is the next one. Put that in before I forget. You didn't look at the advanced posting of meetings that I put on the website? No, I didn't. <laughs> on the calendar. Yeah. Okay. The next meeting? Yeah, the 12th. Yeah. yeah. Three weeks. Yeah. <clears throat> it just, it just works well with the, the holidays. All right. Why do I feel like we're missing something here tonight? Because it's only eight. <laughs> 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 Brian actually may get to surprise his loved ones with Dairy Queen tonight, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's we'll see if Mortar okay. pops in any second. All right, does anybody have anything else that um, would come in front of this board? Nope. Okay, then um, motion to adjourn 809. So moved. Second. Second. All right. Baby Roll. Aye. Johnny, you aye. Carboni, aye. Day aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And there's a few things in here that need to be signed.